Hey guys, this is Joe. Today I want to introduce you to our partner Vanta. Achieving ISO 27001 or SOC 2 compliance can unlock major growth for your company and build customer trust, but the process can be time intense and costly. Vanta automates compliance, getting your audit ready quickly and saving up to 85% of associated costs. And Vanta scales with your business, helping you enter new markets. Join 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora that trust Vanta. Claim 20% off Vanta at vanta.com forward slash startup radio that's vanta.com spelled v-a-n-t-a dot com forward slash startup radio welcome to startuprad.io your podcast and youtube blog covering the german startup scene with news interviews and live events Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRadio.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Today I'm bringing you the second episode of our Entrepreneur Tools as you requested today. And right now I'm in my cramped study, but I do have here Peter Hart, who you may remember from his Pythia um, interview of course, remotely due to Corona, but we'll be talking about his journey of entrepreneurship and the tools he used to get started during his entrepreneurship journey in the last eight years. Hey, Peter, how you doing? How, how are you? Hi, Jörn. Nice to, nice to hear you again and see you. Totally my pleasure. Um, when we've been talking about entrepreneur tools, basically you were the one who got me started on this idea and, um, so we thought, okay, we do more than one episode. We're not yet sure how many it will be. And due to our schedule, that was the one who brought you this idea. I didn't even know. Yes, we talked about it uh, before. And uh, then uh, somebody else showed up earlier. And since we're both busy, the next one with us may take some time. But nonetheless, there will be at least another one. So let's get started and hit the road. Let's hit the road. All right. All right. So um, the first tool I want to recommend is having a file management system, especially for documents. And my big recommendation is making use of it by um, scanning all of your letters that you get from any from any from any state st state institutions, from any business partners and any, anything similar scan them, upload them and have them ready whenever you need them, even if it's five years later. Um, it saves a lot of time in searching and especially a lot of, there's a lot of, um, you might you might have a lot of trouble when you don't have your documents, whenever there's a, whenever the tax authorities come to, to check on you, whenever your business partners um, don't remember which contract has been signed in the end. So um, scan, upload, name it so that you can find it again. And um, this saves a lot of trouble. Uh, we use Google Drive. I've been using Google Drive from the beginning and we still do, but there's enough uh, similar services where you can store your documents safely. And um, I recommend not to store them on your own server um, because if you get hacked, um, all of your company documents are gone. Um, but to store them somewhere where you have a very high security level, um, which these big companies provide. I I would personally add because everybody is uh, getting curious. Huh? What type? What version of the contract you signed? Because contract negotiations can be very long and very intense if it's about enough money. And so you will have like ten, sometimes fifty versions of a very long text document. And maybe you were not diligent enough during the negotiations and assigned to them 
all the proper versioning and stuff like this. And so you end up not really knowing which version was the signed one. And that could be very embarrassing, but it happens more often than you would think. Especially if you suddenly uh, need to go to court with the case and, um, well, you, you can't find the signed document. That's, uh, that's un unlucky, to say the least. Right. Um, Not that it ever happened to you right now or never. Well, definitely uh, similar things have happened to me over this time, yes. That is... Um, even with all this precaution, but if I can just would just imagine that uh, all of our paperwork would we would have to find in some archive and hope that we put it in the right folder, then um, I would have spent a lot of my time searching instead of building companies. Right. So um, this is tool number one. Tool number two. Starting very early with a CRM system. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. Thank, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, customer Relationship Management is um, also an organizing thing. Um, sounds boring, but is essential. Um, you, you even start, no matter what you do, you will uh, start gather, gathering contacts and you want to have your contacts sorted and so that whenever you you have a problem or want to start something up or start a partnership or whatever you want to do um, you can look through your contract uh, contacts and you find all the contacts that you have made in that specific field and the same the same rules apply as for storing your documents properly is um, remember to do it and tag tag properly so that you you also that you find the the person you need and um, and and keep using it usage yes so that's that's number two obviously if you start uh, building up sales in your company you need a CRM system anyway. But even before sales, even if you do something that's that's not even close to sales stage, I recommend sorting your contacts because you forget a lot. Um, uh, most people forget a lot. And Plus, I would strongly recommend to add notes when and what you talked with this person. It's invaluable if you talk to a lot of people to have the right contact especially if you can also search those notes right um yes make notes um to your contact so that when you want to get back in touch even if it's after years you can say uh, how you met and uh, what you've been talking about people um are very glad if you remember them and um it's much more of a of a warm call then um if you just contact someone out of the blue and, and then just tell them hey i have your card but i don't remember anything about what 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 we talked about but um i know you're the right guy that's a totally different approach than if you um then if you know what what was the last thing you you talked about together right so that's uh, number two number three is not so much of a tool in a, in a classical sense, but is these, these I would call, these two I would call um, infrastructure, basic infrastructure uh, tools. And now that you have these two basic infrastructure things, I, I would transition to um, a tool that I call principles. Um, there's also a book called Principles, uh, written by Ray Dalio, which I highly rec recommend, um, where he describes his principles. But um, I think everyone should build up his own principles that fit to your to your company that you want to build or the job you want to do or whatever it is you do and who you are. Um, you can get inspired, of course, um, by principles of of other people. But in in the end, you need to adapt them to you 
and to be able to live with them. Um, building up principles is is a big topic and is a, an incredibly powerful tool because principles allow you to make decisions based on decisions that you've made before already. So you've decided on a principle, for example, let's say um, that you only hire people who um, can work by themselves, who, who can work independently, um, because your principle is that you don't want to build too many um, management layers. Um, so you want people who are in, independent workers and independent thinkers maybe even, and that, that could be a principle for your company. Um, I highly recommend thinking about the, these things, think about what kind of a, a founder am I, what kind of a business leader am I, So and thus what do I need to think about when I hire people. Because obviously, not everyone um, can lead everyone. So the people you lead need to fit to your style of, of leading and need to, need to fit to your style of managing the company. And this is just an example for a principal category, right? But uh, I, I want to go with this because it's, this is, um, this is a th something that you encounter from the from the first day when you think about um, how do you want to expand um, and how do you want to hire, who do you want to hire to the very, 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 very late stage of your company. Um, hiring is something that is always essential. So think about your hiring principles, think about your, your risk principles, think about your um, strategy principles and think about the principles for example how do you want want to balance um, your own life against against your company life um, think about these things it's very good to write them down and revise them constantly they obviously they always evolve and change um, some some get dismissed after a after a while. Some get replaced, and some get evolved. But think of, think in principles, because if you think in principles, it helps you with a lot of decisions. Because you have a decision, and and then you you can split it, you can grind it and split it into um, a few basic principles that you've established for yourself, and they can help you uh, take your decision quicker um, and number two if you have written your principles down you can explain them to the people you want to work with and this makes it a lot easier for you and them to understand each other and to see whether you agree that whether you can agree on some principles or your um maybe thinking very differently about basic principles. And um, this might give you a hint whether this could be um, an employee or a partner or not. Right, so that's, um, that's number three. Um, start building early, start building your principles. It also is important because building principles is also a learning process. And it might seem quite trivial at first. Um, for example, if you write down, I don't want to lie to business partners, um, that seems kind of trivial, but it starts, you start practicing building up principles. And then at some point, if you read Ray Dalio's book, he's presenting his principles and it's, it consists of, I think, over 200 principles um, or, or, or even more. I, I was wondering how many principles do you have yourself? How much have you written down about that? I, I, I think I, I am at 183 or something. 
183. Um, and they, they keep changing, obviously. You, you, you develop yourself, your, um, your view on the world and on the, on the company and everything they develop. And um, I think I'm revising them every three to six months. Um, and, and I'm reading through them and I see many times I see somewhere I, where I see that I've, I've, um, evolved, evolved them and, and maybe some are too stiff or maybe some are too broad. And, and it's very nice because you have a, some time for yourself where you can really decide who you want to be as a, as a company leader. And where do you want, what are your principles and where, and where you want your company to go? And does it reflect, and does the current state of decisions that you make still reflect um, what you actually want to be? Would, would you say people need to read Ray Dalio's book first or be totally detached from them, think about important areas and develop their principles by themselves? Or does it give you a kickstart when you are, when you already have a frame of reference and you think that is good, that is bad? Um, I think both both ways are possible. Uh, I think if you read the book, you get a very deep understanding, much more than I I tell you right now and within five minutes um, about what what the print what principles are and and uh, what the use of principles is um I, I highly recommend the book so you i think you should read it no matter whether you want to write your books down or not um I, I, but i think uh, in any way is possible the, the, both ways you mentioned i think are viable i see so none is better than the other um anything else important Right. Um, okay. So um, coming to number four. Number four is this is is, is also more of a not a not a viable tool. Um, it is making building up company culture. So now you've you've I've, I've mentioned two two very basic tools in order to to get started and have your 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 things together. Um, and and one in order to shape um, your decision making, and now number four is establishing company culture. Um, book recommendation for this topic is "What You Do Is Who You Are" by uh, Ben Horowitz. And the company culture means that everybody in the company is following one. Uh, ground, ground path, one 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 broader path, and and that things in your company are done um, with respect to your company culture. So here you can have very different approaches. Um, to name a few, for example, Facebook's approach very long for a very long time was. Um, move fast and break things um, so the company culture was we we rather try things and and maybe our product from time to time gets gets broken here and there but but, but we move very quickly um, and obviously they have revised that that um, that cultural tagline um, over time now that they have become big and um, have a lot of responsibility. Um, obviously, a bank wouldn't go with with this kind of culture <laughs> or a law office. So define a company culture and um, things that make um, make a company culture are also um, traditions within the company and um, things that patterns and things that keep keep happening. For example, in our company. Um, across all of our divisions, uh, every three weeks there is a there is a morning where um, we call it co coaching mo morning. It's there for bringing um, knowledge into the 
into into the company and, and it's, it's basically a, a day we invest into our people um so every every three weeks um on that wednesday morning um everybody gathers and someone is presenting a topic that the others might not be as um deeply um might not know as much as that person so for example um usually when i make my presentations i talk about leadership i uh, train or, or I, I try to bring my what i know about leadership and and how to build up teams and how to incentivize people and how to um to manage management that's usually the topics i talk about when when it's my when it's my turn um and so I give my knowledge about these things um, to our teams because, you know, that's the thing that, that I have most experience in in our company that I do mostly. Um, and, of course, uh, I want to bring this knowledge to, to our people in order to create more leaders and for them to build up their teams and this is how the company is supposed to grow so we have we have this um, because our, our our culture says that we are our biggest asset assets are our our employees um and we we do for example this we have um any any course our employees want to to make is being covered by the company even if it's very far away from their um, current current job description, any fair they want to go and explore new new fields of business, um, it's covered by the company. So we have a very high priority on on getting new knowledge into the company, training our people, um, developing our people, because we think this is this is the the biggest um value that we can provide for our people and for the company right so this is a reflection of the company culture um if you start with a company culture that says um employees first people first um then these are the the implications these are the traditions every three weeks um these are the 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 offers um that you give your employees and this is an example for one trait of your tradition so start uh, of your culture so start thinking about what kind of company do you want to to build very early because this is something that unites um everybody who starts working with you and you really want people to understand what the culture is and where they're working at. Um, uh, what what would be a point um, I would like to emphasize here, really, really specifically, is a lot of um, big companies do have something like uh, people first in their company culture in the written rules, but basically they will uh, cut the parking slots for half of the people. So they need to come in early and search somewhere for just a parking slot. So pe all the people are already annoyed when they come in and nobody will then believe people first. So basically it's something, if you write something in your company culture, in your statement, you have to follow through and there's no way around it. Otherwise people won't believe it, won't live it. Of course, yeah, it's not enough to make a fancy tagline that says um, we're the greatest company in the world. That doesn't make you the greatest company in the world. Um, you you have to, to live it. And this is where it gets interesting. And this is where it gets real. Um, another recommendation is uh, for this topic, and I think someone who does this amazingly is the Airbnb founders. Um, they have a lot of interviews um, that they've given and um, they talk a lot about their company culture. A great example for a great culture. And 
fitting to their business model. That's also something that uh, the company culture should reflect. Fitting to you and fitting to your business. Um, like I said, you don't want to you don't want to build a hospital and um, have your uh, culture be uh, move fast and break things. That's uh, that's that's not good. that's not good. So it has to fit, and so you have to think about it. It's not trivial. That's it. Uh, it's for too early uh, stage one. Um, look shortly after early stage and and one mid stage. And but all of these. Are, are for are relevant from from start to finish yes i would totally agree um you you can find down here in the show notes of course all the links and that is of course not the last point uh where peter will be back according to our schedule we'll have another entrepreneur tools together and i'm really really looking forward to it as well as we are looking what pithia really can do in terms of forecasting peter it was such a pleasure having you here really looking forward to, uh, to our next recording thank you joe and uh, the pleasure was all mine thank you and uh Thank you to everybody. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.